Okay, third time's the charm on this one where I made some improvements, mostly to the the audio sound effects. On the most recent video, the sound effects were, it was just playing one audio file when the button was pressed and it just kind of cheesy. And then I decided why not just um, fine tune smaller snippets of audio um, from the same inspired Star Trek sounds. Um, and so right now, uh, what I have is when the when the app is playing, or when the app is running in the background, and it doesn't have to be in the foreground, I am just have it here so that you can see it. I did fix an embarrassing bug where if it wasn't actually visu visually showing the first time, it wouldn't have initialized everything. So that part's been fixed. So now it'll launch into the tray, and then I foregrounded it to the foreground. And so you can see it uh, working. But um, now, when it's running, it plays this little, I don't know if you can hear it, this hum sound. And so that sound is just kind of the bridge from the Starship Enterprise um, with the little beeps and positive all, everything is good and hunky-dory. And so then the next sound is I, when the button is pressed, it uh, plays a quick feedback sound. And if you press it, I'll try to do it here, when it's uh, not going to allow it, if you press it and it's uh, in a paused state, as in that light is amber on this uh, secondary AV switch, the AB switch, um, it'll uh, beep a negative to you that you can't do this right now. And then it'll also, that if it did successfully go past that beep, then it will play a fairly quick um, starting sound that it's getting the ball rolling. Um, and then it will uh, switch. Now Windows is going to play some beeps when it's just got USB devices unplugged and plugged. There's probably a way to customize those uh, USB unplugged and plugged sounds. And now that I think about it, I might be interested in trying to hack that. But let's just leave those Windows USB unplugged, plugged in sounds uh, our stock. And then when it sees that the key that this keyboard itself on the primary is ready for use then it will play a positive sound confirmation that the keyboard is available um, and this whole time during that switch the um, the a b switch is going to be amber and the moment that light um, it's just kind of timing based but it's a fairly consistent timer i haven't really seen it get off um, that if it's after about 15 it's actually indeed 15 seconds and so from the moment you press it, it's 15 seconds when the, till that light turns, the amber light will turn off. And then you'll hear a dee dee, meaning that uh, it's, it's a more eye-catching or ear-catching sound that uh, you're now able to push, you're allowed to push the button uh, to swap back again at this point in time. So all that is uh, verbiage behind what's about ready to happen. So here we go, three, two, one. That's the positive sound with that. Do -do -do -dee. That means you can start using that keyboard now. The amber, the light is still amber, and three, two, one, it's gonna beep here in a second. And that's the sound that says you may now press the button to go back the other way. And while this is going, And there we go, there's the beep sound that we can play with, we can swap it again. And so it works pretty well. Um, it's pretty fast. It's got a lot of interactive sound effects now, and it's uh, got some mild kind of ear tone or back tone sounds. So I'd call it an improvement, kind of the third time's a charm. Um, it's, it's really close to uh, being aesthetically usable and not completely cumbersome and uh, awkward to use. It gives some reasonably good audio feedback. There's no real haptic. Um, there's no like rumbling or so, so that, the, and there's no visuals. It's actually meant to be very um, non-visual. The, the standard operating mode of the software is in closed mode. So that you don't even know that it's there. Um, I added the uh, bridge sound effect. I can actually control 
the volume of it. It's I, I cranked it up for this recording, but I can drop it all the way down to zero if I want. Both of them are playing, but I can um, raise this up to be really kind of loud and annoying. I don't know if noise suppression is going to kind of take that out of the loop or not. But it's it's there. I can fine-tune it if I find that annoying. I can drop it even more, even just turn it off. But I'd like to... to I now get an audio feedback of kind of a, a, a white noise tone in a way that... Uh, and it... it I've gone, kind of gone into the realm of the aesthetics of the science fiction um, bridge of the Starship Enterprise and whether those um, sounds that are on the bridge are you know, kind of annoying or not over time. And I think with at the right volume level, they seem that that, that side tone um, is pretty reasonable. And it's I, I typically game in a space game anyway, and so it's kind of it's kind of nice to have that spacey sci-fi sounds anyway going on in the background so i don't mind them um, but i do use this to switch um between desktops when i'm playing videos or something um debugging i can um i only have these two right now and i've already kind of gone into the uh, a little bit about the agent smith which it'll bypass this k v there'll, there'll be no need for a kvm when i do the uh, kvm is hardware um, Agent Smith will be an entirely software-based uh, way of switching, where here I've got um, a PC, uh, black PC's keyboard, where Agent Smith, it's not working right now, but theoretically from the black PC, which sits right here, I can go to the white PC, or the, I'm calling it the black PC, even though the color is red, it's, it's the evil uh, this is my, my evil computer and my good guy computer. Uh, that's the whole night versus night uh, concept. Uh, I should say PC. And uh, over here I have the uh, white version of the same thing. I've just taken the keycaps. They're sitting right here. Taken the um, white and black keycaps. In fact, that that keycap is black. So even if it's glowing red, it's still a black keycap. And over here. The this uh, keypad to keypad um, is right now connected for USB power reasons to this uh, good guy computer. Again, the good guy computer, the bad guy PC. Thank you. Um, and when I press the, if I'm on this computer PC, then I will uh, want to press that one. And if I want to be on the black PC, I'll push this one, and really in the end, this keypad would be connected to a Raspberry Pi that is running a uh, Moonlight client, which the Moonlight is NVIDIA's, it would be a custom Moonlight client that I implement some keyboard handling and a couple other bespoke um, customizations on. And then you would no longer be actually viewing directly the PC itself. You're actually viewing the um, Raspberry Pi that's viewing, that's got its Moonlight client pointing to a specific PC. And when you press one of these buttons, it'll basically tell the Moonlight client, now view and use the keyboard of connect to this other PC. And then the Moonlight client will swap to that. And then the Agent Smith software is kind of all networked together where this software that's running on that Raspberry Pi will connect to the software that's behind the Raspberry Pi that this keypad is connected to. And if this Pi knows that it has swapped PCs to now show this one on the screen, then the Raspberry Pi that, will, that was running on this one will know that it got kicked off and it will basically have to figure out the only one available is this PC and so it will be, it'll swap out to here automatically. So it's going to be very similar to the, in the end, uh, it'll be a net effect very similar to what is going on with the KVM swap, which this, this KVM, there's a tiny little button here where I can swap those KVMs with the single button press. And that's how the KVM 
this specific KVM works. They're, it's not too different than most others, but I, I don't like that there's the hardware required. And so when I use the uh, Agent Smith software that's controlling the Moonlight client that's running on top of each PC would be running on them, the Sunshine server, essentially, so that the Moonlight client on the Raspberry Pi talks to the Moonlight server on each PC and they'll all kind of coordinate and swap out in a large um, matrix or cluster of soft, pure software switching, only driven by a hardware switch and then is running on a... software has to run on some sort of hardware. Um, so that then they can swap out. And then the, I think I've shown this before, the final uh, pinnacle goal would be on this keypad here to be the um, each uh, row. May, I haven't decided whether the rows or the columns would be the PC and then alter, uh, invertly the columns and then the rows would be the monitors. So that from any PC monitor one, PC two monitor two, PC three monitor three, PC4, monitor 4, PC5, monitor 5, or I could click PC, uh, in, in this case, for example, PC1, monitor 1, uh, PC2, I want it to view um, on this monitor that I'm sitting at, if I'm actually sitting at monitor 1, I want to be able to see PC1, oh no wait, I want to see PC2, oh wait, I want to see PC, PC3. So essentially this first row is where I'm, if I'm physically sitting at that, but maybe I have um, some friends or family that are on other computers and maybe we're playing a game and I want to swap them in between other com other PCs and or maybe they're asking for help and so I need to jump in on their PC. So I may, if I know that I'm on monitor one, and they're down here, then I can basically put myself that um, I would swap into their PC and I could fix, help them in their situation. They would meanwhile on their PC have swapped over to the PC that I was on. And then when I'm done, I could push the button and swap back in. And then not everyone would need a keypad this big. This would be more for the eye in the sky or the video producer of some sort. And so that's uh, the current status that I'm working on. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching, like, and subscribe.